What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a video about War Tales, an open world strategy RPG that sees us controlling a band of mercenaries just trying to survive. However, at the beginning of the video here, I do have to inform you, of course, that this video is sponsored by Shiro Games, which is the developer of the title. So with that out of the way, let's actually dive into this thing and talk some details. First things first, this actually isn't the first time that I've covered this game. I covered it when it initially launched in early access back in, I believe it was the very end of 2021. However, the reason we are talking about it today is because the game is launching in full today, of course, and there will be links in the description below if you want to learn more about it or check it out for yourself. War Tales is a fairly interesting game, especially in how it approaches both story as well as gameplay for a game like this, because rather than play the classic hero, we play as a band of mercenaries traveling the land, taking on contracts, and the morality of that is of course up to you, in addition to how you play. So much of the gameplay revolves around you exploring and managing your band of mercenaries pretty much however you see fit. But the game takes place about a hundred years after the fall of an empire known as the Adoran Empire at the hands of a plague. Now, in the aftermath of all that, the land is rife with bandits, mercenaries, thieves, so needless to say things are pretty bleak. And we are simply trying to get by. We do this by exploring the vast open world here across six different zones, one of which is being added with the release, the new one being called Alazar. And while we explore these particular areas, we have to deal with whatever local trouble might be contributing to the unrest, all while taking care of our mercenaries' needs via survival options and just making sure they simply get paid. So with that concept in mind, let's talk about starting up a new game. Right away, the game provides you a variety of options to sort of tailor the overall vibe and experience that you're going to have. And because of this, you can find a happy medium somewhere between a game that is relatively easy or a much more punishing experience. So right out of the gate, you will be picking a destiny. We will be deciding who our companions were, our initial band of mercenaries, that is, which will determine some of their starting bonuses before moving on to picking out our starting options. Now, at the beginning of a new playthrough, if you will, you'll only be able to start in the first region. However, as you advance the game and potentially play it more, you can start in other regions. Outside of which region we want to start in, we have other options to tailor as well. For starters, the combat difficulty, which is novice, experienced, or expert. Novice is pretty forgiving, experienced is good if you've played these games before, and expert is if you want a real challenge. However, separately from that, we can pick our survival difficulty. This is the sort of resource management aspects of the game. We can either make this pretty easy to manage, period, or much more difficult and actually requiring involved management. And then lastly, we can pick the save mode. This is going to give us an Iron Man option, a limited save option, or just free saves. Free is pretty much what you'd probably expect. You can save whenever you want in multiple save slots. Limited limits a save to a single save slot. You can sort of back up to checkpoints just just in case something gets messed up, but you can't save quite as freely. And then Iron Man is, of course, you get one shot and if you get wiped out, you're done. And then just before we actually start the game, we pick our exploration mode which comes down to adaptive or region-locked exploration. Basically, you are deciding whether or not the game will scale its levels to you. With adaptive exploration, the game will always provide a challenge because it will scale enemies to you. Whereas region-locked exploration is a more traditional, I would say, system where each region has a set difficulty to it, and once you surpass that via something like levels, it will become much easier. And then from there, we're dropped into the game and can simply start doing whatever it is you really want to do. However, you'll probably want to head to the nearest town and start picking up bounty contracts as well as managing any potential equipment you would like to do. So let's talk about managing our team a little bit. For starters, characters very much so can die in combat and we'll get to the combat 
section here in a bit, but keep in mind you're managing potentially a large amount of people. While you'll start the game with four characters, it wouldn't be unheard of to have upwards of 20 towards the later parts of the game, all of which will be participating in combat potentially. So knowing how to do things like outfit them appropriately is of course important. So we start with gaining experience of course, which is done in combat, at which point these characters will start leveling up and diversifying what they're good at as each sort of base character type or class, if you will, can specialize in a variety of further roles that allow them to do unique things and will also dictate what type of equipment they can wear, such as weapons or light, heavy, medium armor, that kind of thing. And when it comes to outfitting your characters, you can either choose to purchase equipment, simply take it off slain enemies, or even perhaps craft it yourself, as the game provides multiple crafting systems, be that blacksmithing or something like providing camp supplies, which will upgrade your camp and allow you to do more things when you are resting out in the world. And then while you're in town, when you're getting ready to hire more people, say you need to replace someone or you would simply like a larger team, you can go to the tavern and potentially recruit people, which will of course cost you gold as these people need to get paid, as well as influence as they want to join up with a reputable mercenary company. And influence is a resource that is gained by, of course, exploring and doing things out in the world, such as completing contracts. Also, at the inn, you can pick up various mercenary contracts, which can send you out in the world to do a variety of things, dealing with potentially dangerous animals, roving bandits, and how you deal with those situations can also be a bit varied. In some cases, you'll be able to talk people down with either an expenditure of something like influence, or you might simply opt to fight them all. However, regardless of how you do it, once you complete these and bring the party back to the tavern, you can turn these bounties in for gold, which will allow you to facilitate all sorts of other gameplay, such as participating in the economy, if you will, as there is a thriving sort of trade system. You can pick up trade goods and take them to various parts of the world where they may or may not be worth more. So as I'm sure you're getting a picture of here, there are a variety of systems at play that allow you to play the game largely how you want, and we're not even close to done. Another big thing to keep in mind is your party themselves as well as their relationships with each other. As you explore the world, the bar at the top of the screen will slowly tick down until you eventually need to make camp, at which point you'll need to rest, feed everyone, and handle any other activities. While you're in camp, you might make use of the workshop, which will allow you to craft all of the camp supplies I mentioned earlier, and the camp is very customizable. You'll be able to build a lot of things that will sort of automate various things. You'll be able to even move the characters around a little bit and assign them to parts of the camp which will then enable particular bonuses upon resting usually. So needless to say, the camp is a pretty big deal. However, all of that stuff can play into the factors of your mercenary's happiness. Needless to say, unhappy mercenaries aren't going to perform well for you and might just outright leave, and occasionally you'll get events dealing with each individual mercenary, and these can potentially lead to increased or decreased relationships between these characters, which can lead to them either hating each other or actually falling in love. So there is a little bit of party dynamics at play here. And those are all of the systems you should probably be keeping in mind while you pursue the sort of scenario I believe it's referred to as in each particular particular region, as each region has a sort of story at play. The beginning area that you'll be starting in sees the locals dealing with an influx of refugees and some of the tensions therein. Now, you can either come across events that progress this scenario naturally, or you can go to a tavern in town, talk to the informant who will point you in the right direction at the cost of influence. So in this way, in addition to all the sandbox gameplay elements, there is a broader narrative, so to speak, at play. So all this exploration and management is actually leading somewhere. All of that, however, finally brings me to the combat section. You'll be participating quite a bit in combat for this particular game, and that combat is turn-based strategy gameplay that revolves around utilizing your mercenaries to their fullest effect. As your mercenaries participate in combat and level up, they'll be able to increase their stats as well as pick up new abilities that allow them to do more things, and those skills and things they can do are typically used with valor points. Valor points are earned in a variety of ways, typically by 
picking up passives are things that grant you valor points in specific instances, such as when a character kills an enemy or ends combat engaged in combat with an enemy, etc. Valor points allow you to use your skills in addition to your sort of regular attack. So a bit later into the game, when you're building up a lot of valor points and have a lot of characters with skills, you can do quite a bit. And when you are potentially managing large amounts of mercenaries, these battles can get very significant. Combat does have a turn order. However, on your turn, you'll see down on the lower left of the screen there that you have a set number of turns in a row. However, you can use any character that has not moved in that round on your turns, meaning that you can click onto another character and then use the turn with them instead. So that also goes a long way to allowing you to set some stuff up. And then each character has a set amount of movement they can take every turn, unless, of course, they are engaged with an enemy. Attacking an enemy or being attacked will engage you in combat with that enemy, at which point you can't move unless you disengage first, which opens you up to an attack of opportunity. You can also use your basic attack with your weapon every turn, and if you have any valor points, you can also use the skills you've accumulated, which gives you the basics of combat. Now, from there, it does get a lot more interesting, of course, with a variety of abilities and things that augment the way you will approach this, in addition to equipment that can give you special abilities or potentially even apply status effects. However, a key piece of information here to know is armor, health, and your character's injuries. If your character is wearing armor, you will have an armor bar. Enemies have to get through that before they can hit your health pool under normal circumstances. However, this does damage the armor, and after combat, you'll have to spend materials to repair this, though that is relatively easy to do. And if your characters start taking HP damage, they can potentially get injured, which will require medicine to heal. It's also possible to catch the plague, which requires its own special healing, usually from a healer in town. And that, I would say, is the bare bones basics of combat. Now, at this point, I imagine you've pretty well got the gist of this game. However, I do want to leave you with one more bit of information I haven't talked about yet, and that is simply the knowledge system. Knowledge and paths. Many of the RPG systems and secondary progression that will give you a lot of convenience abilities or the ability to craft more things is handled via knowledge. As you craft things for the first time or come across new locations, you'll start earning knowledge. At certain milestones or effectively leveling it up, you'll be able to spend knowledge points on learning new things. These can either be general skills or passive abilities for your entire troop, like the ability to sprint on the world map, for instance, or simply making your troop use less food per day, that kind of stuff, or potentially learning how to craft new things, which will give you the ability to more easily outfit your characters provided you have the resources to do it, which is a pretty straightforward system. The other half of this is paths. As you perform various actions, you will potentially fulfill challenges as part of the path system, which will then grant you experience for that particular path. At milestones here as well, they will level up and provide you passive benefits fits based on the level of the path, but also give you knowledge points that will allow you to learn specific things related to that path, which is great because it will generally make you better at the thing you are actively trying to do. Though with that, I think we have taken a nice thorough look at War Tales and much of the gameplay it can offer you. Though, believe it or not, there are things I did not mention in this video, secrets to find, a quest to undertake, and a large world to explore and find those things in. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, I would tell you to check out the links in the description below so you can see for yourself what War Tales is all about, but this is going to do it for me. So I certainly hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, let me know down below how you feel about War Tales. But regardless of all that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.